bought the new album, Riddles, Ruins and Revelations. It's only a little while away now, about two weeks away. Yep, two weeks. No, next week. God damn it, my, my maths is terrible. Yeah, it's like ten, nine, ten days on the 12th. It's That's right, yeah. For a race, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's obviously quite an interesting uh, title. How did you, what was the meaning behind the title? Um, yeah, with my titles, you know, I always try to, um, uh, to try to uh, find something that, um, that uh, clings really well and that has a kind of a, a deeper uh, meaning behind it. Uh, I was never a uh, big fan of the, the very direct titles that are kind of obvious. Um, yeah. I, I always prefer the titles, you know, that made people um, make people think, you know, to to kind of really have to, uh, to think deeply about things, you know, to try to to understand what what I meant about the titles and um, and that's uh, yeah. I always felt. Uh, uh, felt uh, uncomfortable talking about it, or I felt it would be weird in a way for me to explain what the meaning behind it, because then there would there wouldn't be any sort of magic or any anything for people to think about anymore, because yeah, kind of <laughs> reviewed or kind of gave gave the answer to the, uh, to the riddle. So I always I always prefer to um, to leave that part up to the to the listeners and the fans, you know. Cool. I mean, that's, that's quite an interesting way then that the the title of this album really does kind of reflect that. It's a riddle as to what it is. You'll make your own revelations as to what it means, so on and so forth. Yeah, I mean, that's that's also one of the, the cool things, you know, uh, that I find about lyrics, you know, in general and, and t- the title as well, you know, that... Um, it's 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 some form of form of art, you know, and uh, yeah. all art can be uh, interpreted in 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 many ways. And um, if you ask one person, for example, what he will get out of it, it might be totally different than than the next person, and so on. And it's, it's you know that's re- one of the really cool things about uh, um, about art in general. I think. Mm, I agree. Um... You mentioned um, recently that this is a sounds like a modernized and a new side of Sirenia. Um, what what do you feel about this album is more modern than previous Sirenia releases? And what would you say this new side of Sirenia um, demonstrates? Um, I think maybe uh, the biggest difference with this album compared to uh, especially the previous one and, and also the, the albums before is um, they really gave the electronic elements um, a bigger part to play on this album yeah. uh, definitely brought more of that stuff into our sound and our music and um, in terms of the keyboard uh, work um, uh, we, we tried to use a lot of retro sounds and, and a lot of it is is really inspired by the uh, 80s actually and mm. um, you know we didn't do do quite much of that in the past you know um for many of our albums you know the, the symphonic thing played a big role and that is something that you know came and went a little bit with with each album uh on some of our albums, the, the symphonic element is is, is really huge and, and uh, a important part of, of the sound. Uh, on some albums, we, we kind of toned it down uh, a bit and, and let other instruments, other sounds come more um, in into focus. Uh, mm-hmm. But yeah, I'd say that like for me personally, the, the two biggest changes on this new album is definitely um the the retro sounding keyboards especially the 80s kind of sound and also the the use of electronical equipment being more um yeah just basically playing a bigger role now than than ever before i'd say yeah Um, and you can really hear the um the forcefulness of the keyboards um in the in the single addiction number one which we'll get to in a moment and 
I really, what I really like about it is, like you say, it is definitely inspired by the eighties, but it's not like um, how we have uh, synthwave and things like that now, which is directly um, like a retro kind of music. This is more; it's taking the inspiration rather than just copying it. So it really uh, works well with Sirenia's music, I think, without it becoming a um, a rip off of eighties music. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's what we always try to do, you know, to to kind of um, keep um, the core of our sound and you know, like the basic uh, uh, musical concept, and then you know, take elements from other mm. eras or from other genres and kind of mix it into into our sound. And that's definitely also what we did with uh, with um, elements from the '80s. You know, we. We we kind of mixed it, you know, with the sound of a of of a metal band from from 2021, you know. So it it sounds, I think it sounds very uh, modern and and kind of retro in the same time, so to speak. So we tried to, yeah. to make make a nice combination of the two. Excellent. Um, well, speaking of 80s, one of the um, surprising things about Riddles, Ruins, and Revelations is that it finishes with a cover of um, Voyage Voyage by Desireless which um, is a song I wasn't familiar with, so I looked it up. And uh, it's, it's, a, um, it's a proper classic kind of 80s synth pop um, mm. kind of song, really. So it was, it was quite, kind of a surprising um, addition to this album. What was the reasoning behind choosing this song to cover? Um, I remember when the song, <clears throat> uh, when I first heard the song, it was back in 1986, I believe, uh, it was playing on the radio in Norway. Um, that song became a, a huge hit in Norway. It, it went to number one, and I, I believe it was a big hit on all over, pretty much most most of Europe. Um, and the song, you know, it was like a typical '80s, you know, popular music pop song yeah. kind of thing at the time. But but the thing that really you know caught my attention was uh, I really felt this melancholic vibe to the song um, and you know the song itself is, is minor based and it has this melancholic feeling to it uh, which a lot of the pop music from the 80s had actually and mm. I do believe that this is probably the main reason uh, why I'm such a big fan of the 80s in general and, and I also think that uh, there was you know really a lot of great melodies um, composed uh, in music uh, in this in this decade um, but you know this song voyage voyage it, it has you know it, it stayed with me uh, <clears throat> throughout the years um, and it's even a song you know that I've been listening to quite a bit in the last year I played it um, a bit on the tour for example on the tour bus when we were, we were out touring and um, at some point I, I mentioned it to the guys that uh, we should try to do a cover version of this song. I, I, and I thought it would, you know, fit fit really well into our sound, you know. And yeah. at, at first, I think the guys thought I was joking. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> you know, later on, I begin, um, began working uh, on it, you know. And I had, like, a clear vision of how to arrange it and everything to, to kind of make it sound like a Serenia song. And um, uh, when, I, when I finished, you know, the, like, the sketch of it or you know like the, the basic sound of the song i sent it out to the guys and, and they they, they kind of liked it you know and it was thought it was cool and everything but they were still skeptical you know whether this was the right song for us to do um, and so yeah we decided to uh, wait until the vocals was recorded and until we had like the final version of the song and and then we would uh, listen again you know and, and ma make up our minds about it then um, and in the end, everybody liked it so much that we decided to put it on the album as um, as, a, as a bonus track. And uh, I think it fits really well, you know, uh, especially due to this album um, uh, being um, so much inspired by the 80s. It would make perfect sense, you know, to uh, if we were going to do a, a cover song to, to also, you know, pick a song from, from the 80s era. Mm -hmm. It's interesting because I would imagine it's it, it probably didn't do as well in America as it did in Europe. 
when it was originally released by Desireless. Um, I, I must be honest, I don't know how well it did in the UK. So for a lot of us, um, it will be the first time hearing that song. So mm. it's great in a way that you know it kind of brings that song to a new audience as well. Yeah, it's um, it's, uh, it's it's but I feel you know that, that the melody and everything is is quite timeless. You know that it, it could fit mm. in many ages, and the the version that we we did of it is kind of modernized. You know, so but yeah, I <clears throat> to be honest, I kind of expect. A little bit of mixed feeling, you know, or no, a bit of mixed feedback, you know, to the song from from uh, fans and from from listeners in general, with with being that kind of <laughs> different thing to do, you know. Some people love it, you know, when when we do something different like that. And for me personally, I also really think it makes a lot of sense uh, for us as a metal band um, making cover of a song from a completely different genre and then you know turning it into to our sound our style so to say um uh, for me it never really made any sense for a metal band to, to cover a different metal band because you you basically have two two versions sounding more or less the same and um, yeah and, and i find it a lot more interesting uh to to, to pick a, a song from a totally different genre and then turning it into the genre and the sound that we're playing and it's the whole process is more interesting, and I believe also that the results can be uh, more interesting that way. Definitely, and it's not like um, 80s synth music has been ignored by metal. I mean, Gamma Ray covered Pet Shop Boys. Um, I, I know there's been several Depeche Mode covers, and I, I would bet anything that some band, some metal band, has covered Erasure at some point as well. So, yeah, yeah, but um, onto your own music like i say you've done the music video for addiction number one uh, which is also the first track on the album yeah. um, so how well do you think this song represents the album as a whole why was it chosen to be the same <clears throat> <music video>? uh, <laughs> to be honest i don't, really don't think it, it really represents it's probably not the best song to to represent the album i think because in my opinion it's it's probably the song that is you know um mostly different than anything else we have done in the past um and but at the same time i think it's definitely the most uh, melodic uh, catchy song on the album so it, it kind of fits that single single format so to say and um you know with this album we want you know to present something really fresh something really new modernized and so we felt that was um, was a good uh, choice to do that. We expected a lot uh, of of uh, um, mixed, you know, feedback on that. We expected the fans to either hate it or love it, and that's exactly what happened. And uh, so with uh, single number two, it it made more sense to then pick um, one of the songs that are more typical for for our sound, you know, to show that. Uh, uh, the album is, um, you know, it's like always with Serenia, the albums will, will be diverse and varied and that there is also uh, songs on this album that is, you know, m more typical to to our uh, true kind of style, you know, and, and more similar to things we've done in the past. So I think the album has a little bit of both things as, as it should have, you know, it, it, mm -hmm. we, we have to bring new things to the table with every album. Uh, that's very important to us. And, but at the same time, try to not step too far away from, from our, uh, um, musical, uh, concept, so to say. So mm -hmm. there is, I think there's a little bit for everybody on the album, you know, whether they, uh, yeah want the typical Serenia sound or whether they want something new and fresh or you know whatever they're looking for at least they should find some songs or some parts on the album that they would like yeah I, th I think that's always the best way to approach an album it's always good to have something fresh um something a little surprising on offer you know because um whatever band you like you think of their like classic album if they made that same album over and over again, you'd be bored. So it's good to have, you know, mm. that exploration. And also it's good for yourselves as artists to explore. Absolutely. I, I think, you know, if, 
at this time, you know, we're really releasing uh, our 10th album and, you know, we've been around for 20 years and, you know, if we were kind of like writing more or less the same album every time, it would be like really uninspiring and yeah. kind of demotivating, you know, so it's, you know, for us also to keep the interest up and to, to stay motivated and for this to, 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 to be fun and, and interesting, you know, it's important for us to, uh, to, to search for some new things with, with each album. Mm. Um, unfortunately, we can't really have interviews nowadays without touching on the pandemic. Mm. Um, a lot of bands have had to have albums pushed back or they've had to record it in installments, things like this. Um, how badly has the pandemic affected the work on Riddles, Ruins and Revelations? Um, everything was going really smoothly um, with uh, the composing process and all that. And it was when we <clears throat> were supposed to start recording. Emmanuel, she was supposed to fly into Norway um, in the end of March. And um, just uh, a few days before uh, her flight, then the, um, they closed down the border and, and the, the flight was cancelled. Um, so we we had to, to rebook her flight and got cancelled again. And we rebooked several times. And uh, in the end, she, she wasn't able to come to Norway until the middle of August. So, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Things, uh, things got like postponed for, for about half a year. Um, which was really frustrating. Uh, you know, we had to, and it was really hard to plan anything, you know, because you didn't really know what was going to happen the, the next week or so. And, but, you know, we tried to adapt to the situation and improvised a lot, finding uh, solutions. And our guitar player ended up recording his parts in France. Um, our drummer was in um, Finland at the moment, so he recorded some of his drum work in Finland and um, I did most of my stuff or all my stuff in Norway actually and mm -hmm. uh, Emmanuel was able to come to Norway finally and so yeah it was you know we had to do different uh, things quite different on this album than we would normally do um, but but yeah I'm happy that we were able to to find um, solutions and to um, to be able to finish the album and uh, we feel really happy with uh, the result and everything and how it turned out. And but yeah, we feel kind of frustrated, you know, with this situation. You know, uh, releasing a new album is always really exciting. You know, it's a big thing. It's you know, um, it's the end of a two two years hard work, so to say. And you always look forward to go out on tour. You know, to uh, perform the new songs live and present it and promote. The new album and and obviously obviously that won't be um be possible uh with this album at least not for now i mean god knows when when touring will be possible again but i really don't have any high expectations uh for for these uh, these next months i mean if we can start touring uh, by the end of the year uh, i think that's maybe the best we can hope for realistically at least how it looks right hopefully we'll be able to start start sooner but yeah we'll just have to see what what will happen in the next months yeah yeah and it's it's doubly unfortunate as well because obviously this year marks the uh 20th anniversary of serenia um as a band yeah. i believe so as well so it would have been great as well to really have you go out there and celebrate your legacy and everything like that on top of the new album so. yeah it's really frustrating you know we were um we were really you know uh planning to to set up something special for this year um and we had a lot of plans also for uh last year and you know everything everything was cancelled or postponed and so on and you know at some point it, it didn't make sense planning anything anymore <laughs> because it it wasn't going to happen, and and now it's is more about basically monitoring the situations, and we are constantly in in contact with booking agents and and venues over Europe, and and you know checking in and seeing how how if there is any positive uh, 
things happening or if, if they I'm starting to notice any changes, whatever, when it will be realistically possible to start touring again and all that. And yeah, yeah, it's it's just not uh, it's just not worth the effort of, of planning anything now uh, in, in the next months. You know, I think we definitely have to wait over over the summer. Maybe some some summer festivals will take place. Uh, the last thing I heard today, speaking with management, was that most of the festivals, you know, um, for early summer, like April, May, and so, they are all moving their dates at the moment. And okay. I see a lot, of, a lot of tours being moved until 2022 already, and so it, it doesn't really look very, very good for this year, at least not now. No, but. Um... But for everyone listening, that's all the more reason to actually buy the album and buy a Serenia shirt and everything as well, because ultimately this is your livelihood. So I think yeah. now more than ever, the metal community and music in general needs to really sort of um, rally behind the artists. And obviously people like fans in that are going to be struggling as well, but you yeah, know, it's, it's, at least some people are still able to work. Yeah, it's really affecting a lot of a lot of people. This thing. Uh, mm. Some people are lucky, you know, that they're still able to to work more or less as normal, you know. Um, yeah. But definitely, everything around culture, you know, around music and, and touring and 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 also sports, you know, and and all that is is affected really really heavy, you know, and. Uh, yeah. So it's affecting us financially and socially, and and uh, yeah, it's it's frustrating situation. It really is. <laughs> yeah. Well, in spite of that, Morton, thank you very much for taking the time to speak to me today. I really do appreciate it. That was my pleasure talking to you, mate. Thank you, and I wish you every success with the new album. I hope it does really, really well. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. No problem. Have a good evening.